one thing I will be working on soon is this scooter. It's uh, an 89 Yamaha Jog, or technically a Riva Jog. Funny story about that. Just the other day, that's my truck. So my truck, the wheel hub bearing went out, so I had to replace it. So, long story short, there's two hub bearings available. There is the old bearing, or the old hub unit. Uh, there's one offered with a fine thread wheel stud, and one offered with a coarse thread wheel stud. Studs. The price difference being 100 buck dollars. So, I figured, well, the, uh, the coarse thread, the coarse thread wheel hub is $100 cheaper than the fine thread. Of course, I needed the fine thread. So I got to thinking, well, all other things being identical with the hub, which they are, I'll just buy the cheaper hub, swap out my wheel studs for the ones that come with the new hub, and save a hundred buck dollars. So that was my plan of attack. I got the hub home, got my old hub off, and took out the coarse thread wheel studs, these bad boys. And then I drove out my fine thread wheel studs. And I noticed, after I drove them out, that, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but these splines here, these are what lock the, the, the stud into the hub assembly and keep it from twisting when you tighten the lug nuts or try to loosen them. And looking at these splines, they were, they were mashed, they're, they're folded over, they're mashed flat. Um, some of them have material inside you can see but anyway I foresaw in the future a scenario where we'll have an issue either tightening a lug nut or loosening it because I didn't want the wheel stud to spin since it's used and kind of worn down I was afraid it wouldn't grip properly so I thought to myself self we can either fix this problem before it becomes an issue now or we can deal with it later I figured an ounce of provision prevention is worth a pound of cure so, I was like, well, I need to run to the auto parts store to get some new wheel studs. My truck being torn down, couldn't use it, so I looked around the shop, and I've got two scooters here, so I'd show one of them's technically not mine, uh, so I grabbed my scooter. That bad boy right there. Hopped on it, buzzed on down to the local Napa, and picked up my wheel studs, eight of them. I got them for about $50. So there goes $50 of my profit margin or my, my savings right there. But I'm still ahead. So, so no big deal. You know, $50 saved is better than $0 saved. So I hop on the scooter, head back home or to the shop. One stoplight before I got back, I noticed uh, a little engine noise from the scooter. Hmm. I was a bit worried. Didn't know what it was, but not much I could do about it at the time. So the light turns green, I cross the intersection, I come on back, and I go another, what's, two or three hundred yards uh, till I get to the entrance to the parking lot to this place. And <laughs> as I'm pulling up, uh, I was at wide open throttle, the scooter just went from wee to boom, that dreaded sound. And I was like, oh no. So the motor let go. You can just tell it's lost compression. <sighs> so, the point of that story is that in an effort to save money and a lack of planning ahead of my part, I basically came out even, but now I have more work to do because I have a scooter to fix. And luckily you can get like a cylinder and piston for these things for like 40 bucks. Uh, it's not OEM Yamaha, but it'll do. So uh, that's another project I've got to do. And I do believe the reason, I'm, I'm not certain but my hypothesis is one of two reasons that it that it uh, let go. It never actually seized up, but there's just no compression anymore. One is that there is no there's supposed to be a shroud over this por portion of the cylinder because the scooter has a fan here and it's an air-cooled <clears throat> engine, so the fan. <clears throat> Blows the air up 
and it's ducted over the cylinder. And since there's no there's no shroud over the cylinder itself, that air was just rushing across the top here. <clears throat> it wasn't ducted down over the cylinder in its entirety. However, since the cladding is not on the scooter, this is wide open, I figured, eh, it'll be okay. And I still stand by the, the reasoning that it was okay, that that's not the cause of the seizure. My belief is the cause of the seizure is, when I got this thing running about a year ago, I had to put a new oil pump on it. The oil pump lives down there, you can't even see it. And for the first tank of gas, I put premix in the fuel tank, and I also, you know, I bled the oil pump properly, and the old oil injection tank has oil in it. You know, I ran about a whole tank of, of premix through it, and I figured by that time, surely, the oil pump system would be working properly and uh, I wouldn't need to use premix after that first tank. So before I <clears throat> loaded up to head out to the parts store, I topped the tank off with just straight gas. I even had the thought when I was doing it, I was like, well, should I put some oil in there or not? I was like, eh, ah, I won't do it. I'll be okay. Turns out that was a bad decision because I'm pretty, pretty Pretty, pretty sure that I'm going to see a lack of lubrication issue when I tear it down, and that'll be it. But anyway, that comes later.